with a new episode of Two Amp Vita. And today, we're cooking a chassis, if you know what I mean. So here we go. Got the chassis, the veggies, it's hot, there's no transformer. Put a little pepper on it. Let's get her in the oven. Cook us a hot chassis. Happy Labor Day from Terry at D-Lab Electronics. On the bench today, I've got an old 1960s DeVille hot chassis guitar amp. This thing ran four tubes, two of the 12A V6s, a 50C5 output tube, and a 35W4 rectifier tube. No power transformer. So a lot of guys hit these when they were kids, and they kind of love them. However, they're dangerous to operate. Now you can get on the web, and there's some guys that have isolation transformer techniques to help you from getting electrocuted, but I have a better fix, and it actually will make this amp sound cleaner and be much more reliable. Stay tuned. So here it is, right out of the 1960s, and perhaps your childhood, a little DeVille amplifier. Many stores carried these. They were an entry level practice amp for kids getting into the hobby. So you got a tone, volume, input jacks. Here's a construction. I've already pulled the back panel off. Okay. So you can see they based it on a circus board. That's kind of too bad, but that's what they had to do to keep the cost down. It's got an 8 inch speaker here. The cabinet is actually solid wood, okay? So this thing's definitely worth restoring or repairing. However, you do not want to do it in its current configuration without a power transformer because it is still a shock hazard. Conveniently, back in the day, they would put the nifty little schematic right inside the amp. You don't see that anymore, do you? But you can tell, here is the tube lineup that I was talking about. You got a 5K transformer, 8 inch speaker, there's your rectum fire, here's a chassis layout, okay, very nice. However, if you look right in this area, you'll see there's something missing. It's called a power transformer. So your AC comes in and it goes across the filaments to drop the 120 volts. That's why they chose the values they did, a 35, a 50, and two 12s. So you add that up, it's pretty close to the line voltage. Then, they rectify it through the 35W4, give you the high voltage to your tubes, and you're off and running. However, what the issue is, is because it's using this two-prong plug, half that chassis can be at the line potential and give you one heck of a zap if you're using a microphone and your lips touch that mic. It would be like kerpowby. So let's say you have one of these amps and you want to repair that power supply or find a way of redoing it to where you don't get shocked. Unfortunately, this will probably cost you more than the value of the amp. So if you're going to go ahead with this project, it's great. Just keep in mind that you're never going to get your money back out of it, but you can make your amp safe to play as it is and enjoy it like you did when you were a kid. So here's what D-Lab came up with. I told you before, there are some articles online that use an isolation transformer. The issue is, is you still have to drop 120 across all those tube filaments. So when you do that, you can't do any kind of hum balance adjustments, so the thing will always be noisy, no matter what you do. So what does D-Lab do? I build a new power supply. Yeah. So this is a hand-built constructive power supply. I use a 6X5 rectifier tube, a standard power transformer for a tube amp and then this module will go in here if I can do it. just like that fits in like a glove right and then this cabling is going to swing up here right and you're going to hook up so you're going to have high voltage your filament power the whole bit on this standalone chassis which would make this thing as quiet as can be and as safe as can be so what a great idea, huh? You think, man, I ought to do that. Now, here's the part you got to keep in mind. As you can see, I used a 6X5 rectifier tube. The current rectifier 
on this chassis is a 35W4. Well, guess what? It's gone. You have to remove the 35W4. Also, you have two 12 volt tubes and a 50 volt tube. So the 12 AV6s will be swapped out with six AV6s and the pinout is identical. So that's a no brainer. But here's where the problem comes in. And that's the output tube, the 50C5. To replace that, I'm going to put in a 6AQ5 tube so that all the tubes now in this amp are 6 volt. And this, these blue lines, that's my 6 volt filament power coming from the new power transformer. The red and black, that's my high voltage. And then this is my AC, which is a shielded cable, so I can still use the current power switch. So cosmetically, you would never know this is done, but electronically, it is a tear up. That's why I'm saying, if you guys don't like this, I'm sorry, but the guy that owns this wants a safe amp, and this was the way that D-Lab came up with doing it. So here's a little close up on the power supply module, okay? You got your line cord coming in. This is an octal plug. So this guy, if I can get it to unplug, pretty tight. This guy would unplug from the power supply if you ever need to do maintenance on the main chassis. You don't have to pull this out too. He can stay where he's at. There's a fuse in there to protect it. A choke, which this amp never had. And it's hand wired. And yes, I custom bent this chassis. Now, if you guys are interested in building one of these, I will post the schematic here later in the video. All right, since the power supply portion is complete, now all I have to do is modify the amp itself, okay? Now, keep in mind, this AC cord, stock AC cord, is no longer because the power supply now has the AC input. So this guy is going to be history as well as rectifier tube and the onboard filter cap. So I'm going to get the chassis pulled out, I'll modify that, and we'll get her in there with a the new power supply. So here's the chassis removed, 35W4, 50C5, pair of 12AV6s, okay? So the rectifier tube is gone. This tube we're going to change to a 6AQ5, and these two guys will be 6AV6s. This filter cap's not needed anymore. We're going to obviously maintain the output transformer and that will work directly with the 6AQ5. So first step, as I showed you on the schematic, currently all the filaments are wired in series. Now they all have to be wired in parallel. So I'm going to do the filament circuit first, which is going to require cutting these traces so that I can rewire them in parallel. There's really no other way to do it. Now another thing you could do if you really wanted is remove the circuit board completely, put in a panel, and build yourself a hand wired amp. But in this case, we're going to go ahead and modify this one because at this point, it's really not worth much. So as I showed you on the schematic, the 120 comes right down onto the circuit board. They have a fuse here on board that I've already disconnected. Then it goes through the AC switch on the back of the tone control, through there. The other half of the 120 is right there on the circus board. No power transformer, no isolation. So when I'm done, there will be no 120 direct on the circuit board, okay? Because we're going to have a power transformer. What I'm going to do next is get the filaments rewired. On every one of these tubes, Pins three and four is a filament, okay? So one, two, three, and four. So those guys have to be isolated, and you can see that one goes right over to the three on the other one because they are in series, right? So we're gonna break this trace. We're gonna break all these traces, the three and fours, and they're all gonna be tied together. And then we'll hook that up to the filament line coming off the new power supply. Wiring is complete underside. And I have the power supply wired in, and it's being switched through the tone control, which has the power switch on the back. You can see your new filament wires in here twisted. Right here is where the 50C5 used to be, and now 
that's a 6AQ5, which did require some pin rearrangement. So if you reference a tube data chart, you'll see that you'll have to reverse a couple pins. But it's not too bad to do at all. It came out pretty well. Now, let's fire it up. Well, here's a new setup. We've got the new D-Lab power supply here. You can see our new tube lineup. 6AV6 is here, 6AQ5 here. No more rectifier tube, no more main filter cap, but I did add a little one here on the screen circuit to keep her from motor boating. We'll kick her on. We're monitoring over here on a scope across the dummy load resistor. Use an audio generator for the input. Oh, there she is. There's my volume. And here is a treble cut. Because that's all this tone really is, is a high cut. So she's working. No smoke. It's going to be quite the little amp. Alright, moment of truth. I've checked it on the scope. She's clean as a whistle. There's no hum. And now, I actually have a guitar hooked up, right? So give her a little volume here. Take that tone back. Bet you've never heard one of those sound that good. And it's safe to operate. That's the best part. So here we go. Everything's secured. The power supply has four screws that come in from the bottom. So that's not going anywhere. Now you may wonder why I used this gray shielded wire on the AC line. That's because, as you know, AC likes to get into your circuitry, right? So I ran shielded cable right up. To the switch which eliminates any hum transferring off that AC line. Alright I promised you a look at that power supply schematic so here is a picture of it. You can take a look and you see it's very basic in construction but the main advantage is now is you got isolation and you have a choke which makes your little DeVille practice amp super quiet and responsive. All right, here's the fallen soldiers, miscellaneous tubes, filter cap, resistors, and things that aren't needed anymore because now you've got this upgraded standalone power supply, right? And if you were to take a look at the amp from the back, originality-wise, it really hasn't been affected much. Yeah, you see the transformer down there, but I think that's pretty cool. And the other big advantage to that power supply is... The original 50C5 only had about 150 volts DC on it, giving you about 2 watts of power, whereas this one's running at 260 volts through the 68Q5, so you should be getting around 4.5 watts. So this thing has been upgraded in a couple ways, safety, power, and reliability. Well, there you have it, another D-Lab extraordinaire upgrade to a vintage guitar amp. Yes, I know, it probably wasn't worth it, but the enjoyment that the owner's gonna get out of this thing again is all I need. Hope you enjoyed the video. So what a shocking conclusion, tube amp the top. And if you didn't like this, don't get your undies in a bunch. Whew.